फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अभिक वेलकम टू द क्लब कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन ऑन योर न्यू रोल फर्स्ट फ्यू डेज ऑब्वियसली हैव बिन बिजी यूर इनिशियल थाट्स इन ज्वाइनिंग इट्स बिन हैक्टिक बट इट्स बिन ब्यूटिफुल आई हैव हैड अ चांस टू मीट डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स विद इन द क्लब यू नो आई हैव हैड अ चांस टू मीट द टीम फर्स्ट टीम द कोच द प्लेयर्स Uh, I've had an opportunity to spend some time with uh, some of the staff members uh, and understand, you know, their role within the club. So it's been a bit hectic, but uh, I'm enjoying every single minute of it. I think, uh, obviously, when uh, you take on a role such as this, uh, there is a lot of energy within you, and you, and you want to do a lot of things, uh, and you want to meet everybody and understand, uh, you know. everything that goes on within the club so a lot of time has been spent in those uh, endeavors and uh, i think uh, now the focus will be on uh, creating a blueprint for uh, everybody uh, collaboratively to work on and see how the rest of the season unfolds because uh, we approach a very crucial stage in the season both on and off the pitch so i'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what uh, unfolds next Kerala Blasters FC is often described as one of the most vibrant clubs in the Indian football ecosystem with a fan base that is nothing short of a movement. What was it about the Blasters that made you want to take the role of a CEO? I think there are very few clubs in India, not just in India but in Asia that uh, that you want to be a part of as a football administrator. And uh, Kerala Blasters is one such club uh, not just because of the fans that you spoke about but because of what it stands for. because of the emotion that it conveys it is a no brainer you know to not join the club and uh, when i had the opportunity to decide whether i wanted to join or not it just took me maybe half a second to say yes um so there uh, is a big the one of the biggest reasons that uh, i wanted to come here is to make a difference uh, and uh, that was a conversation i had with the owners and i was really happy to see that we aligned on the vision we had for the club going going forward so taking this up as a challenge to deliver more success both on and off the pitch is something that got me really excited and uh, that's the main reason why i'm here today with the club's roots firmly in kerala and a fan base that extends globally how do you envision balancing the local ethos of the club with the international ambitions i think as a football club uh, you have to focus on like you said both aspects you have to be global and you have to be local as well i like to call that global that's the terminology you use uh, the strength of uh, attracting the fans that we have within the state i think that's already established and uh, Kerala Blasters has enjoyed the support of uh, the fans from within the state for several years. Um it is not something that uh, we take for granted of course because a lot of that also depends on how the club progresses and whether we are able to reciprocate this to the fans because obviously they give us a lot of support and a lot of love and as a club it's on us to to give back to them in the term in terms of results in terms of uh, fan engagement in terms of uh, grassroots football and also um the improvement we can do within the state to improve the level of football so uh, it's a it's a two way street uh, the fans give us so much and we have to give back to them uh, and i think the fundamentals of that are in place uh, we already have the structure in place it's about making just uh, you know fine tuning some of the things and making small adjustments as a great team here at kerala blasters and uh, a very ambitious uh, young men and and young ladies who want to work for the club and who want to see the club grow and they want to grow along with it uh, if everything is aligned i see no reason why we cannot make those small tweaks and we cannot improve further um when it comes to the international side of it i think like you said kerala blasters does have an international appeal um and uh, there are a lot of fans who who uh, exist outside the country in certain pockets and uh, and i've seen wherever the club goes whenever it's going for pre season whether it is uh, you know to to dubai or whether it's uh, another country it it does enjoy a lot of support uh, and i think uh, why they love the club is because it connects them back to the state that's that's a medium uh, that uh, exists for them to feel connected to kerala and i think uh, uh, it's it's something that we need to of course strengthen further 
we need to give them more reasons to love us we need to give them more reasons to feel proud about uh, the club that represents their state in the indian super league and there will be certain uh, measures that we will start taking uh, you know as we go forward um, and we want to have a deeper connection with the fans both within the state and outside the state and a lot of that i think uh, will come from our endeavors and uh, what we try and uh, create so that both local and international fans have a reason to feel connected to us and uh, and we want to enhance that going forward in the coming years uh speaking about your experience you've held uh, several leadership roles in various clubs within the ISL uh before how do you adapt your leadership style when it comes to managing a football club what's different about leading a sports organization of a magnitude like Kerala Blasters compared to your previous roles i think uh, i think the main uh, ethos of everything is to keep it simple i feel um there are some of the things that i've done that have brought me here so you know um certainly there are some things that uh, have been done right and there have been a lot of mistakes made which i've learned from but i think uh, i'm somebody who likes to communicate with people i'm somebody who's approachable uh, and i feel i i collaborate well so i think uh, and it's not just about leadership it's about collaborating with people because uh, um everybody has a different skill set and like i told you before at blasters we have people with different skill sets and somebody might be stronger in in areas that i am not uh, you know so it's all about getting every together everybody together at the same table and getting them to see the common goal which is for kerala blasters football club to succeed both on and off the pitch um so i want there to be conversations i want there to be you know ideas i want people to uh be brave and vocal about uh, what they can do and i'm somebody who's open and i like to listen uh, because i believe a good idea can come out of uh, you know anywhere and we have to be receptive to that we uh, have to be broad minded and we also have to uh, you know encourage debate we have to encourage constructive criticism so um i think the biggest uh, not adaptation but i think one of the major things that i will focus on would be to enhance collaboration and and it would be to get people with different skill sets to come together and work for the common cause kela blasters obviously is known for nurturing young talent obviously with the grassroots programs that the club has across the state of kela how do you plan to build on that and further cement the club's role as a hub for youth development within the indian football ecosystem i think uh, Kerala as a state is no stranger to local talent. So we've seen uh, over the years there've been a lot of players who've come through the ranks into the first team and we can see this year uh, there are so many players who've progressed from the youth teams and I think that is something to be proud of. I think we are one of the very few clubs in India wherein there is an actual pathway created where you can see that if you're good enough you can come and you can you can have a place in the first team and why not? And we've seen a lot of those players performing they're not just fringe players they're players who make a difference so i'm sure they're inspiring a lot of young children already to to dream and to and to understand that there is a pathway i think uh, in terms of understanding uh, the local landscape we do have partners on board who enable us to reach uh, places within the state at a much granular level and we have a very strong technical uh, team that works uh, on this and that works on the philosophy that we want to pass down to the young blasters program and uh, you know for example carolis and uh, rizwan and thomas who's a reserve team coach along with all the uh, head coaches of the u teams everybody has a part to play uh, and i just had a conversation with them today morning and they were telling me about the process and why coaches want to come to kerala blasters is because they feel that they can actually create a difference and uh, a lot of the a lot of the players who want to eventually come to the first team i think they need to feel that there is a genuine pathway that exists for them in terms of making and casting the net wider within the state there are obviously um uh, we will be auditing what we can do better in the existing structure but i think the key lies in the solidity of the program uh, and in giving the kids the best technical platform to hone themselves 
and to make sure that they are ready to take that jump. I think uh, we've got the people to do it. It's just about making sure it percolates down. And we're and, and one of the other things that uh, we need to do is to make sure it's available to more schools. And we need to make sure that it reaches kids when not just at the age of 12 and 13, but when they are maybe five or six years old. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And of course, I can't share the exact blueprint of how it will be, but we will be working on it, uh, I can assure you, to make sure that we understand what's the best methodology to go even younger and to cast our net even wider. Uh, obviously, uh, when it comes to Kerala Blasters, uh, Manjapada is, uh, is no stranger. It's one of uh, the most passionate fan bases in the uh, in Indian football, uh, how do you see a role in engaging with them and ensuring they remain at the heart of what Kerala Blasters does? I think uh, they're synonymous with the club, as you said, and that's one of the first things I noticed when, whenever I used to come to uh, Kochi, whenever I was an opponent and I used to come to the stadium. In fact, they sent me a very nice congratulatory message when I joined and I told them the, you know, the atmosphere that they created in the stadium, you sometimes get intimidated as an opponent. Uh, and I think uh, not just what they do within the stadium, I've been, I've been told that there are a lot of social causes that they support. And it is, uh, you know, it's one big family. And I think a lot of Blasters fans uh, have found, uh, you know, people with maybe a common bend of mind and, and a place where they can all come and support the club that they love. Uh, I think uh, it's all about, like I told you earlier, having more conversations, uh, seeing what we can do with them, because obviously, you know, we want them to know that their voice uh, is heard and we value that. Um, and they do a lot for us. Uh, but I think what will make this relationship e even better is to have more conversations to see what can be done for them, uh, you know, from multiple angles, because there I believe a, a football club has multiple touch points, you know, of course, some of them are commercial, some of them are sporting, and uh, a, a large part of it is also connecting with fans on an emotional level, because football is a game that rests on emotion and on passion. Um, so if we are able to collaborate, not just emotionally and passionately, but uh, on other projects as well, which, you know, we are, looking to touch on uh, in the coming weeks. I think the relationship will, of course, be there uh, and it will grow even stronger. And we really want them to, to come to every game like they've always done and support us. Whether, you know, sometimes, of course, there'll be bad times. Football is a sport wherein a team has its ups and downs. So we want them to be there for us even when things are not going that well. Uh, which they have shown in the past and they've been very loyal and they've uh, stood by us, so which we really appreciate. But I think, uh, of course, any relationship can be better than improved and we look to have more conversations with them in due course to see how uh, we can not only have them supporting the club, but also identify causes that both of us can jointly support and how we can create uh, an environment wherein a fan feels that, you know, this is the place for him to be on a match day and on a non-match day where a fan feels that a lot of the time that he's giving to the fan club is rewarded through different practices. You have taken over the club at a pivotal time in Indian football uh, with the league expanding and greater attention from both fans and investors and all the stakeholders. How do you plan to position Kerala Blasters in this evolving Indian football landscape? I think the the conversation I had with Nikhil when I spoke to him was about positioning the club as the best sporting club in India. And when you, uh, this statement, if you look at it, it's, it goes much deeper than what you think it is. Uh, when we talk about being the best sporting club in India, it's not just about the volume of the fans we have. It is about the practices that we employ and uh, those practices, whether it is uh, you know, recruitment of players, uh, whether it is analyzing uh, games, whether it is uh, creating an environment that is conducive for the first team and the reserve team, uh, whether it is uh, the marketing practices that we employ, it's, whether it is the media uh, side of it that we uh, push out on socials and offline, uh, whether it is what, uh, you know, whatever we're doing with grassroots, we have to make sure that we set standards in all those verticals and once you have people uh, who are uh, you know willing enough to to be uh, you know 
perfectionists or at least strive for perfection in their respective areas which I believe we do um, uh, I think uh, we will be on track to do that because uh, the beauty about Kerala Blasters Football Club is that uh, you know it's it's a place where people want to be in um, I think if you ask a lot of players you know if you, whether they would want to be in Kerala Blasters uh, Football Club at some point in their career I think 99.99% would say yes uh, and the same goes for coaches. The same goes for uh, you know football professionals like us. Uh, I, I'm sure nobody would say no to joining Kerala Blasters Football Club um, because uh, uh, it's it's attractive. It 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 uh, it resonates with people. So I think uh, the positioning, like I told you, has to be that of a club that chases standards uh, in terms of trying to be uh, better every day and then also set standards for others to follow um, you know there are examples within Asia and of course examples within India there are other clubs as well who uh, you know we have to acknowledge and say they've done a great job in certain uh, in certain verticals but now we need to be the standard setters and uh, for that we need to work extremely hard uh, we need to ensure that uh, like I said we don't take things for granted uh, we have the same hunger and passion uh, that you know that we want say for example our players to have when they're representing us on the field in every game and we need to make sure that we're all doing our bit to the best of our ability and when we are all doing that collectively i think we will be and it is almost certain that we'll be one of the you know flag bearers in indian football where people will look up to us and use us as an example that's what we aspire to be it's very ambitious but I believe if you don't dream, you don't do. Finally, what does success look like for you at Kerala Blasters FC, both in the short term and the long term? That's a good question and I feel success uh, is available in different forms if you want to look for it. For example, for some, reaching the finals three times in the Indian Super League is a form of success. Having players who are promoted from your reserve team or your youth teams to the senior team is a form of success but I do believe and I know what uh, the fans want and I know it is of course something that uh, you know the stakeholders and the owners will also want is success on the pitch which uh, everybody is craving uh, and everybody uh, you know is desperate to get it uh, but in a conversation that I had with Nikhil I, I told him that you often get success when you're least expecting it uh, and when you're, you're very obsessed with it sometimes we tend to overlook some of the things that are important to reach there so I believe the focus has to be on getting things right and preparing and executing for success success will come I'm 100% sure it will come uh, but uh, I feel we need to not work towards the goal but to prepare everything that we need to reach there um, so obviously you know, winning a title is success uh, and that is something I want that is one of the reasons I've joined and we will do our best to get there but we will be focusing on what it takes to get there we'll study you know what it takes uh, and we'll try and execute uh, also you know success would mean commercial success for the club to you know run the club uh, in a manner that uh, you know benefits business practices within the club uh, that is also very important for sustainability um, and uh, I know it's the word sustainability is, is spoken about a lot by the fans but uh, as anybody who's a stakeholder of the club uh, and uh, at the end of the day there are certain elements within the club that uh, are business related those have to be streamlined and those have to be working in the right order so that the club can uh, you know do certain things or invest in certain areas that will give uh, better results uh, why certain decisions are taken of course uh, you know everybody does things with the intention of it being right whether it is uh, with players whether it is on the sponsorship side whether it is on the grassroots side but uh, as we've all seen in sport it's like a lottery sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but uh, what we need to believe in is that the path we follow, we need to trust it, we need to put everything into it. And I'm sure if we have the belief and the intent and the integrity to take those decisions is right, I believe success holistically for the club, whether it is titles on the pitch, whether uh, it is uh, 
uh, economic and revenue related success of the pitch is 100 percent uh, around the corner uh, and i believe with the people uh, we have uh, at the club right from the top uh, you know to the bottom uh, you know whether it's Carolis, uh, you know who's looking at sporting matters uh, whether it's uh, you know Joby who's looking after sponsorships and revenue, uh, you know we've got Anthony who looks at marketing and we've got Rizwan who looks at uh, uh, the academy side of it and, and youth development. I think all of them understand they are they are aligned to it and I think uh, you know they're great people and then they are passionate about the club and I believe together you know uh, with everybody. Uh, I think success is, is around the corner. We just have to be patient and uh, you know there's this old adage you know you get knocked down nine times you have to get up you know ten times. Uh, you know we've been knocked down uh, and I, you know uh, a fair few times but I believe the beauty of this club and the beauty in its fans is that we get up every time we get knocked down and, and it just takes that one time to you know get close to what we all want. Uh, on and off the pitch and I believe we will be there soon.